I've just received a message from our best player, Igor Ribeiro, and this does not sound good. Hey, Gaffer, I hope this message finds you well. I've been quite upset recently since Hoyland joined the team because I'm no longer the highest paid player as promised. If my contract isn't renewed, I might have to think about leaving. Not again, guys. Our best player, Igor Ribeiro. There's absolutely no freaking way we can allow him to leave. The problem is we did have a contract with him, which clearly said he had to be the highest paid player at the club otherwise his contract could be invalid and recently we did end up signing Rasmus Hoyland a big coup for the club he was a record transfer but yeah you can see we paid him 155,000 per week Ribeiro is on a bracket lower than that we've got a decision to make do we listen to Ribeiro and give him a wage bump or in the January transfer window do we just let him leave and guys I don't think there's any decision here to make we have to do whatever we can to renew Ribeiro's contract to be fair, guys, he's holding me hostage, but it's because Ribeiro knows his value. He knows how good he is. In the future, he's going to be a Ballon d'Or contender. And it's only obvious he wants to be paid the most money. We'll also try and increase his contract length, which is working. But now it's the interesting part, the wages. 155 was what we're paying Rasmus Hoyland. I think let's give Igor Ribeiro 160, just to be safe. Is he going to accept it, though? A big renewal for Ribeiro. And he is. There you go. We've solved the problem. At least we don't have to worry about Igor Ribeiro leaving. But we do have a lot of other stuff to worry about, like the Champions League, where we're second in the group right now, looking decent. But that could all change, because our next game's against Barcelona. And if you remember the last time we played them, we got outplayed. I think, guys, the way this group is, if we can get something out against Barcelona, I reckon we should have enough in the tank to get out of this group. Man, Barcelona is always going to be a big, big test for us. But let's see this time if we can do better. Oh, yeah, we are playing away at the camp now though which has me a bit worried not gonna lie it's the same problem from the first game against Barca we just can't seem to get the ball they've got a chance here with Rafinha Bernard Bernard is struggling and Rafinha what was that um don't understand what Barca were trying to do there one thing's for sure we need to get Ribeiro on the ball more often because he could make things stick he's now the highest paid player at the club we need to see more of that Rasmus is the one with the chance almost beat the keeper from there come on you know Barcelona are dodgy with set pieces maybe we could make this one down. Rasmus is header. How does that not go in? We need a lucky goal like this against Barca, man. I'm really hoping we can somehow nope. get it. Not again. Barca's keeper saving everything. Kovalenko. Rasmus on the volley. Incredible goal. But the linesman. He just had to ruin Rasmus's day. One thing I'll say, we've been a lot better in this game than the first leg. So I'm really loving that. Bernardo Silva looking for Ribeiro. Kovalenko. We're moving the ball around nicely. Look at us, Pasia. Ribeiro unleashes the effort, but the keeper again. Pasia's keeper better be getting a big contract off this game because he's saving everything. We missed all our chances and now Barcelona getting into this game with some great football and this is not looking good. We're still defending well, but we need to make the most of our chances. This is where we can really do something here on the counter-attack, but Barcelona just have us covered. Ansu Fati back at Barcelona and look at him go. We can't seem to catch him. Bernard yeah. Bernard slides. Messes up and fair enough. We're still not on the level to compete with Barcelona. I see that run from Hakimi and this could be really good for us. Ashraf Hakimi on his left foot. Oh, let's go. We might be able to get something out of this. That's why you bring in an attacking fullback like Hakimi. I think we've gotten a bit too excited and now Barcelona on the front foot, please. No, no, no. Sam Tickle, what a save. Let's just get it away. Let's get it away. Sam Tickle, no. He couldn't clear it in time. That is brutal. Sam Tickle just got caught lacking there top 10 goalkeeping mistakes of all time has to be it so much time to clear the ball oh the referee blows the whistle a frustrating defeat we should have at least gotten a draw from this now this is the situation for us guys we don't win our final champions league game it's over we're knocked out because Shakhtar could end up getting a point against Barca they've got nothing to play for we need to beat Celtic in our final group game yo I'm already getting flashbacks from the conference league last season remember how we bottled in the group stages no, we just conceded another. This is getting depressing. I think it's done. I think we're out of the conference league. But nah, guys, this time around, things have to be different. We need to beat Celtic. I hate myself, honestly. Why do we have a kit clash? This game, why couldn't Celtic have just used their home kit? You know what, guys? For this game, we need the S2 specs version. I need to be able to see clearly. Looking for Rasmus. Billy Wilson, he needs a bit of support, but it's not there. Crossing it in. 
for Ribeiro. Again, just no space to get the shot off. And no on the counter we've been exposed. This, this could get really ugly, man. I'm not liking this. I really am not. I can't believe we've conceded against Celtic. We're 1-0 down. Our Champions League hopes could get crushed before they even begin. Billy Wilson is trying, but he needs a bit of help. And he gets it from Rasmus. Tough angle, though. Nope. But he can't convert. Corner. Oh, we need something. We need something from a set piece. Easy. But it's not happening. This could be a massive chance for us. Bernardo Silva looking for Rasmus. He's got to convert this. He's put it wide. Rasmus, no. How do you miss from there? Guys, it's not been Rasmus's night. We're bringing on Dave Rooney. We need something fresh in this team now. Our Champions League hopes now rest on Dave Rooney and Lennon Miller who are coming on. A few moments later. No, 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 no. It's 2-0 Celtic. It could be over. Our Champions League dreams are getting crushed as we speak. Full time and it's a 2-0 defeat. It all depends now on what Barcelona did. Oh my days. We're the luckiest club in the world because we had a better head-to-head -head record than Shakhtar. Even with the defeat, we survived. But this was just embarrassing. In the round of 16, Whoever we draw, they're going to absolutely cook us. Before that, we kind of need to figure out why things aren't working for this team. We can't get chances for Rasmus. Our wingers aren't attacking. Our midfield and defense is all over the place. I think it's time for a tactical shift. We've used the 4-4-1-1 formation a lot. I think teams have kind of figured us out. And you know what? Even in the Premier League, we've dropped out of the top four and we're fifth. We need to change something. And I think, guys, the solution of 4-3-3 attack. That means, yes, Igor Ribeiro is going to have to do a bit of defensive work but I think this way we're gonna see more from our wingers and then of course from our strikers it's, it's a bit similar to the old formation just a few things are different and I'm hoping this works we haven't been focusing all too much on the Premier League and guess what our next game back in the league is against Manchester City who by the way still have Toby Payne playing down the left he won the Premier League with them last season a prisoner has just won the Premier League I can't believe it but I don't want to lose to him this season. I want to win the Premier League title over Toby Ben. For that, we got to figure out how to beat City. We're trying a new formation kind of similar to theirs. And by the way, it looks like they're not going to be playing their first choice keeper, Francisco Rodriguez, who is also a former S2GFC player. I don't know why, but I guess that's good news for us. Oh my days, we're going to have stamina issues. I think we'll start with Dave Rooney, bring on Hoyland if necessary, but we're not starting off on a good foot then. Guys, we've endured a lot of pain in the Champions League against Man City in Holland. Please, can we just get back to winning ways? Once again, the kit man is just an absolute fraud. I need to just manually check the kits always, man, because I don't know why it works this way. But you know what? Enough is enough. The kits can't just be an excuse always. We need to win no matter what. Bernardo Silva getting tackled by Toby Payne. No, we can't let that happen. And here he is on the ball. Take him out, man. Ah, oh, we missed the tackle and he's actually playing really well against us. And here he is attacking. Thomas Arnold, that's more like it. A crushing challenge. By the way, so far, new system, haven't noticed any benefits. But what I can tell you is that I do find our wingers making better runs and that itself might be worth its weight in gold. Right now, though, it's Hakimi crossing for Dave Rooney far post. We should have done better with that. Set piece opportunity. Bernard, nope. Bernard attacking. How have we not scored a single goal in this episode from a corner? We've been so close. Toby Payne coming at us. Thomas Arnold, I'll give him that. He has kept Toby Payne quiet so far. And this is what I'm talking about. Our wingers getting in a better position. It's like Kovalenko and an option from Dave Rooney. Controls that well and he's put it in. I can't believe it. Dave Rooney has just scored against Manchester City. That is unbelievable. There's still 45 minutes left more, but if we can get a win against City, how big is that going to be for our confidence? And Kovalenko is having a really good game so far. Looking to find space. Oh, the keeper. Bernardo Silva. Okay, 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 nope. Bernardo. I almost thought he got that against this former club. I'll say this, guys. The tactics seem to be working. We're more organized in the defense because Ribeiro is helping track back. And Man City now have got everything to do. We're looking good. We're defending tight. I think we can do this. A few moments later. No, 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 Erling. Stop that. <sighs> it's still Man City. They still have Erling Haaland. It was never going to be easy. No, no, no. Haaland is just bullying us right now now. Oh, that's a brilliant tackle from Bernard. We can't afford to lose this game at least. In fact, we might still have a chance here to win this. Bernardo Silva, no. And it's now completely end-to-end -end 
as Man City have got a chance here to win this game. Erling Holland, Sam Tickle, he saved us there. Absolutely did. And we're walking away with the point. We couldn't quite beat Toby Payne, but for now, I'll take that point. Still fifth in the Premier League, but most importantly, I think we're building a system that's, that's starting to work. Oh, but that system will completely fail if we don't renew some of our contracts and let key players leave. Sam Tickle being one of them. We have to renew his contract. There you go. Simple job. Renewed for another three years. Will Power, do I renew his contract? I just want him to exist in the club. We, we won't give him a wage bomb, uh, but he won't accept a contract extension then. Am I going to have to negotiate with Will Power? I mean, he's part of the kitchen team. He cooks, but in a completely different way, and sometimes he cooks terribly, which does lead to a few players getting food poisoned. But still, I want him to be a part of the club. Do you know what? He's still the only player in the club's history to have scored a free kick. Roll the clip. Uh, this is so frustrating. I don't even know how much power I'm supposed to put on this, honestly. But let's see. Let's try our best. Will, get this one over and under, will ya? Oh, he's done it. Will Power. Oh my. He's actually scored a free kick. So yeah, I think he's he deserves to just exist at this club. But guys, now we need to focus on getting wins. We're playing Man United next. They're literally 14. They've fallen off and we've got to take advantage. We're heading into the Man United game and I just clocked. Rasmus is playing against his former club. And I'm pretty sure we haven't won a single game in today's episode. That's got to change. And I'm sure we win this. We, we'll, we'll get on a winning run, man. That draw against Man City shows that we can compete for the title this season. But if we're getting cooked like this at the start itself, what are we going to do? We got saved by Bernard there. Bruh. Sam Tickle, I'm getting horror flashbacks already. We get it away. Right now, though, we've got Igor Ribeiro on the charge. I'm liking this. I'm really liking this. Ribeiro, that's more like it. What a dribble. Lead against Man United. Still a lot of defending to do for us. And Sam Tickle making a good save. That's what I like about Ribeiro's new role. He's collecting the ball in so many more deeper situations. And he's then there to collect it back. Go on a run. Potentially score again. Nah, he couldn't get the shot off properly this time. Oh, we've slid through Rasmus Hoyland 1v1 against his former club. Rasmus making it look easy. Oh, he's celebrating against his former club. A bit disrespectful, but to be fair, he wasn't at Man United for too long. And yep, we get the win. I told you guys, Man United are a bit washed in this series right now. I told you guys, just one win and we're slowly now getting our mojo back. A big win against West Ham. And we're now being consistent as well. Another win versus... Versus Wolves. We've also now made it to the January trans window. Where are we in the Premier League with all the recent results? Still only fifth. But it's super tight, guys. The gap is only four points. The question now is, now that we're in the trans window, is it time to bring in reinforcements? Especially now that we're changing formation, opting for a new style of play. We do have only six million, though. And actually, while I was collecting money from the sponsors, my math was terrible and I made a mistake. We should actually have 16 million now. That's fair. Fixed, but it's not really enough to sign anyone else. I think we've made our decisions. We've we've got Rasmus Hoyland, the big money signing of this season. We brought in Hakimi. And I think this is the squad we're going to have to try and win titles with. One thing I'll say about Rasmus, though, his gold return does not justify his price tag yet. He's got to start scoring goals because Dave Rooney, he isn't far off in terms of a gold ratio. So yeah, Rasmus, you got to step things up in the second half of the season. Our next game is literally against the worst Premier League club, not. Norwich. Nah, I swear if we drop points here, I'm legit gonna cry. There you go. At least we get a simple win here. Hoyland got himself a couple of goals too. Oh, actually a hat trick. All right, guys, the trans window is done. And after picking up some good results, we've broken into the top four. Ah, but the gap between us and Spurs is still four points. But we've got a chance to reduce it. We're playing them next. Also, one thing we need to confirm before this game starts. Yup, a freaking kit clash. I'm glad I checked. We're finally in great form, but Spurs are the best team in England right now. It's going to be tough to beat them. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not think we've lost the game ever since we've opted for our new formation. So we're cooking something, but we might concede here. Sam Tickle with the save. What is going on? We just about cleared it away. Talk about not losing. We were about to concede a comical goal. This is why we're rocking the new formation to see Billy Wilson run through on the counter-attack. Still Billy. 
looking for Ribeiro. Hoyland. Oh, it's a brilliant counterattack. One of our best. And Rasmus, we doubted him at the start of the January window. Since then, he's been scoring goals for fun. Oh, Darwiz, he's gotten through. Yeah, and oh, right. Sam Tickle, big save. These saves might actually give us the title come end of season. Oh, Billy Wilson. Another chance for him. Go on, Billy. No. Nope. You've got to score. No. That's one thing about Billy Wilson that annoys me. In the box, a bit dodgy. Can we finally score from a set base? Rasmus? Nope. No way. Poor guy gets denied every time. Guys, this is where we're seeing the big difference in our formation defensively. It feels like Thank everybody's you. giving everything. And that's why we're keeping all these clean sheets and, and getting results. But this is the big game. This is our biggest test. We need to win this. But there's still so much defending to be done and we're doing it in style. This game is really showing a new version of S2 GFC. We're not fearing defending anymore. We're giving it everything. And Igor Ribeiro could get us nope. the second goal. I can't believe we need to take our chances. We've now given Spurs hope by missing that chance. Our defense needs to still perform. I really feel we're going to concede. Maynou's given everything. Absolutely brilliant performance from Kobe Maynou in midfield. No, oh, but this is still a problem for us. Bernard, Bernard doing everything. Honestly, finally, I think our defense is getting the flowers it deserves. And there you go. One of our best ever defense defensive performances this puts us right back in the premier league title race wait a minute we're now top of the league after 25 games 54 points spurs have fallen apart this has to be our season but also don't forget champions league knockouts to resume soon we're heading into the business end of the season but this might be the season we win the big trophies for s2gfc this is just the start